Sources tell CNN that Georgia prosecutors now have text messages and emails directly connecting Trump's legal team to a voting system breach in Coffee County, Georgia, in January of 2021. This comes as the district attorney investigating Trump in Georgia appears to be close to an indictment. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis is expected to seek charges against more than a dozen people. And if she brings charges against the former president, it would be the fourth indictment of Trump since being voted out of office. CNN's Zachary Cohen uh, on these stunning new developments now linking Trump's legal team to a voting system breach in a rural Georgia County. So, Zach, uh, tell us all that you know. Yeah, Fred, Coffee County is a South Georgia county, heavily Republican. Trump carried that county by more than 70% of the vote there. But we're learning that prosecutors here in Georgia have text messages that do connect members of Trump's legal team to the breach that happened in the Coffee County Elections Office, where operatives that were hired by lawyers like Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani did gain access to voting systems in Coffee County on January 7, 2021. But really what these text messages do is they show you the process and the planning that went in to this breach and how Trump attorneys were helping coordinate efforts to get access to this voting system in this rural Republican county. Now, Rudy Giuliani is somebody who his lawyer has vehemently denied that he had any involvement, actually pointing the finger at fellow former Trump attorney Sidney Powell, saying that he had nothing to do with the breach in Coffee County. But these text messages do show that lawyers working for Rudy Giuliani were involved in that planning process. There's one that even mentions the mayor, which is something that we've seen um, operatives that have been working for the Trump campaign refer to Rudy Giuliani as in other communications. So really connecting some of the dots here and really drawing a more direct line between former President Donald Trump's attorneys and this breach that happened in Coffee County that is part of the Fonnie Willis investigation. Hmm. And then, Zach, what do we think this week is uh, going to look like? Yeah, Fred, we're expecting Fulton County DA um, Fawny Willis to start presenting her case to the grand jury early next week. And we could see indictments come as early as Tuesday. As we know, several witnesses are have been notified they need to appear before the grand jury on Tuesday. And look, we expect that maybe over a dozen people could face criminal charges, including former President Donald Trump. So really, that's starting to ramp up here and expected to ramp up here in the early days of next week. All right, Zachary Cohen, uh, thank you so much in Atlanta. All right, let me bring in now uh, Harry Littman. Uh, he is a former federal prosecutor and a former deputy assistant attorney general. Uh, Harry, great to see you. So help us understand, you know, the significance, the gravity, really, of the prosecutors uh, having texts and emails directly connecting members of Donald Trump's legal team to the early uh, January 2021 20, uh, voting system breach in Coffee County, Georgia. It's big. We've known about the breach, but had no idea that it could have been overseen or even the the moving forces would have been so high up in the Trump campaign. Giuliani, pal, it's about as high as you go. And it's a crime that, well, first of all, it's, a, it's crimes, uh, many crimes when you have this sort of violation of computers, both newfangled computer laws and old-fashioned trespass laws. And it really falls under the category what were they thinking? It's mm. so plainly a violation. It's so plainly something that a campaign can't get involved in. And we might have thought before then it had been on the ground, people who didn't know one from the other. But mm. Giuliani, pal, that really puts it up very high. And the third point is it's not nothing like it is in Jack Smith's indictment. And this becomes one of the several details we expect mm. to see from Fonnie Willis that will supplement and kind of reinforce the char the broad charges that Jack Smith has brought on the federal side. And is it your view, because we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, the 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 highest of of the levels among, you know, Trump's legal team that would allegedly be involved here, is it your thinking that the prosecutors may have already connected any dots between them and any possible directives from Trump himself? Well, we know that there are other instances like the false electors in which evidence has been proffered to show just that. Was he involved in the actual incursion into the uh, computers? We know that he was involved in at least talking about seizing computers under a crazy uh, plan with the, the DOD. 
But of course, uh, the the distinctive thing about the uh, Willis indictment that we're waiting on is it has so many defendants. So even if it's simply that this crime stops at Powell and Giuliani, it's still very damning of the campaign as a whole and will be part and parcel of charges that certainly will include Trump in many fashions, if the, if not this one specifically. Mm. And then, Harry, you know, we we know that this, you know, Georgia investigation really got started after Trump called the the state secretary of state, right. pressuring him and others to find votes uh, for him in early January 2021, uh, as the official election count um, showed that he lost. Uh, take a listen, just for those who may have forgotten what that call sounded like. All I want to do. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. So do you still see that phone call, the president called a perfect phone call, do you see that phone call as key to any possible Trump indictment? Oh, yeah. It is a perfect phone call for prosecutors. Nothing like an audio tape that way. And you can just put those words up on the screen and they'll do it repeatedly. And it screams out solicitation to commit election interference, which is one of the leading charges I expect from this indictment when it comes out, say, Tuesday or Wednesday. And if Trump is charged, it would be his fourth indictment. You know, where would this Georgia case rank, in your view, against the other cases in terms of uh, legal threats for Trump? Well, on the one hand, this is sprawling and it's not subject to pardon. On the other hand, it's complicated and he has certain legal challenges that he can't uh, do in other places. I don't think it's as challenging for him nor as sobering as the one six indictment that may now be the first trial to go. But I think it's just after that, when you look at the panoramic detail that we expect is gonna be charged here and the fact that it can't be pardoned, I think it's the, a very, very serious set of charges. Also in some ways more challenging than some of the others. That's a different point. But in, on the overall list of the kind of broad historical indictment of Trump I think it's second only to the January 6th indictment on the federal side. All right, got it. Uh, Harry Lippman, thanks so much for your expertise. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Fred. Joining us now, two journalists on the ground covering this also in Georgia, Tamar Hellerman, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution senior reporter, and Patricia Murphy, political columnist at also at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Ladies, thanks so much for being with us. Um, Tamar, let me just ask you what is so critical about the procedure of how this is going to unfold? And if you could also speak to Trump's team wanting to see this thing, if he is indicted here, it's a state case, which matters for a whole host of reasons. They want it in federal court. So we're expecting this presentation from Fulton County DA Willis and her team to take about two days. That's how long previous racketeering cases have taken her office. And this grand jury only meets on Mondays and Tuesdays. So we're not expecting the DA to want this to extend another week. Um, you showed in the segment before with Sarah Murray that former Lieutenant Governor Duncan and other witnesses have confirmed they're going to be coming in Tuesday morning. Um, and we're expecting some other people as well to come and inform this grand jury of why they believe there's there's probable cause that it was more likely than not that the former president and other allies um, committed um, a whole host of um, different crimes in Georgia, including racketeering. Um, you mentioned that the former president and his team likely wanting to move this case to federal court. We're expecting his legal team to make that move or, or to at least initiate that shortly after the, the former president is uh, indicted, if he is indicted here. That would get him presumably a more conservative jury pool. Patricia, for, for those who maybe haven't been following this on a granular level, like, like you two have, like Sarah Murray has, um, the significance of the two witnesses that we know are coming in, uh, the journalist uh, and the former lieutenant governor, what does that tell you about uh, this moment, this case? 
Yeah, so we could start with George Cheedy, who's the independent journalist. <clears throat> he uh, stumbled upon the meeting of the alternate electors or fake electors, whatever we want to call them, on December 14th in the state capitol. Uh, we heard him speak there on the package earlier, and that tells us that certainly this is a situation that Fulton County uh, DA Funny Willis wants to put in front of the grand jury that fake elector scheme, including the level of secrecy that was involved. Uh, GOP officials mm -hmm. later said, "No, this was a completely open meeting. There was nothing, nothing uh, that we we're trying to hide from the public." But George Sheedy said, "No, indeed, I was marched out, and he was filming that on his iPhone at the time when it happened." And for Je for Jeff Duncan, he was one of the rare Republicans here in Georgia who would have been privy to a lot of the inner workings of what. Trump and his team were telling GOP officials, but he was no longer at that point loyal to Donald Trump. He was speaking out at the time in real time, saying that this election was not stolen. So he'll be somebody who is not seen as somebody who is um, a partisan Democratic actor coming after Donald Trump. He was a Republican at the time and simply saw the facts differently and would have been on the inside of a lot of those calls and decisions being made at the time.